So I'm going to show you how this is done. With this kind of hand knotted necklace, it's very, very important to get your bead cap onto the end of your thread before you begin. And I can't tell you how many times I've put all the beads on and realized that the bead cap wasn't there. First you tie a knot. The thread that you're going to use comes with a needle on it, which is just as well because it's almost impossible to get the thread through that hole without doing it, uh, doing it with a needle. So what you do is you take your, your thread. There's a little hole right between the two caps, and that's where you put it through. And then you're going to just pull that bead cap all the way down the thread till you get to the very end. And then you can start to thread your beads. The next step, I've threaded the beads on. You have to thread all your beads on the thread before you start. You design your necklace, you decide how long it's going to be, and you allow for the fact that because you're going to have a knot between each bead, the necklace is going to be just a little longer. Do not cut your thread. Always leave your thread as long as possible um, to accommodate any of the things that might happen while you're knotting. So you've got your bead cap on. So I've put all these beads on. They're lamp work. And I've capped every one. And then I've put two beads between them. And the knot will go right in there. It's just a chosen design. Of course, experimenting is the way to go. So the first thing I'll do is to tie the first knot right here. Remember how I did that little cord necklet with the, just a few beads on it? It's the same thing. You make a ring, you drop the end through, you get a grip on it with your pliers, and you pull your knot tight. Then you're going to slide your next bead up. Make a ring with the thread, drop it through, take your pliers, follow in through the hole, get a nice tight grip on the very end there, and pull your knot tight. There are some gadgets. There's a little gadget for hand knotting necklaces, but again, I really like to keep things basic. And nobody taught me how to do this. I sort of worked it out. So. Quite honestly, I don't know how other people do it. I can only show you the way I do. Here we go again. You make a knot, drop it through, get a nice group of your pliers, and pull the knot. So I'm going to go through the whole necklace now. I'm not going to do it on camera for you, but I'm going to go through the whole necklace and knot it up. I chose to put blue on it. I just thought it was a nice touch. And then I'll show you how to do the caps and the, put the clasp on the end. I've knotted the whole necklace, and I've slipped the last bead cap on over the needle and down and done the final knot and cut the thread. And now I'm going to um, do a very delicate little operation. Be very careful when you do this, because if you burn the thread too much, you have to start the necklace all over again. So you light your flame, and you just dance it over the very tip of that little frayed edge. And what it does is it, it makes a little sort of, it burns the, the nylon so that it, it, nothing can sort of come undone. It's just something I do. It makes it neater. Now I'm going to close the, little, the two little cups. And it's sort of an awkward operation, so it may not be very visible, but you have to get your round nose pliers and you have to squeeze those two caps together, like that. Now there's a little tiny, weeny little uh, piece of something there, and I can certainly cut that off, a little bit of the, of the thread. Just cut it off, so there. There it is. The bead cap is closed. And now I'm going to do the other one. 
So I take my flame, dance it quickly over the frayed part, and then close the bead cap. Again, a little awkward, but... So now both bead caps are closed. I'm going to take one of these clasps. I think this one is, propor this one is proportionate. And I'm going to attach it to this ring. Now you may have come across necklaces with this particular attachment in your grandmother's uh, jewelry box where this thing is broken. It usually happens because somebody has opened and closed it several times. If you only close it once, it's strong, but it can get metal fatigue very quickly. So you have to do it right the first time. So the clasp is in there, and I'm going to take my, my round nose pliers, and I'm just going to curl it into place once. So now it's closed, and it's strong. On the other side, it's my habit to take some chain because I like these links. And since I have the chain anyway, it just seems like an easy way to go. So actually, let's do it this way. It handles more easily. I'm going to, I'm going to attach it while it's on a chain just because it's easier to handle and then cut the ring away. Once again, I go into the little ring Turn it into place. Then I'm going to cut this ring free. And my necklace clasp is finished. There. I want you to imagine that instead of my simple lampwork green beads, this is a sampler of all your different designs and think how beautiful it will be. And in the meantime, I think Marie Therese is going to love it. Well, here you are, Marie Therese, your little green necklace.